Hey, what's up everyone? Bob King's here and welcome back to some more Paladins today. We are on the PTR. We're going to try out the new champion that just came out here. Um, Torvald. He's a frontliner. And he has a lot of shields. So at the moment, I'm just going with like a, um... A recharge build here. So recharge regenerates 850 shield per second. For 2.5 seconds. Chen um, channeling on an enemy shield siphons 2,000 shield health per second. So basically, he's like a shield stealer. Um, we'll go damage ourselves a bit here. You can see he has a lot of, lot of life. Like you can see, Jesus Christ, he has so much life. Um, but we'll go try and get ourselves low here. And we can go right click, and our shield charges right up. So we get like an extra 2.5, 3k life there from activating our right click there. And it's on quite a low cooldown. You can see like it's already off cooldown now. So this seems like a very, very strong ability. You can also see the shield in the middle, like on the left next to where my ammo counter is. So you can see from there, it's like on half there. So you know if you have um, shield left or not. Okay. So what else do we have here? So we have the right click shield. How much do we have on full life? So the shield doesn't regen automatically. You have to um, regen it using your right click or your Q and stuff like that. So all together, we have around 10k life. So. Pretty ridiculous how much life you can get. Okay, so what else do we have here? Runic Blast, shoot out a short range blast that silences and disarms enemies for 1.5 seconds. Um, I don't know if you can actually disarm these people. Yeah, you can't disarm these people. But that seems quite strong, wait. Let's go over to these people, we might be able to disarm them. They don't shoot, but we might be able to see an effect that they disarm. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, there you go, they're silenced and disarmed. Doesn't last too long. 1.5 seconds was it? Yeah, very short duration, but um, quite a strong ability. Disarming them and silencing them it does both, which is pretty crazy. So they can't use any abilities or deal damage to you. Okay, that's quite insane. <laughs> Basically, gives you 1.5 seconds of immunity since they can't hit you back with anything at all. It's on a long cooldown though, 14 seconds, so quite a long cooldown there. Okay, and then our last ability here is projection. We can give a shield to an ally. Oop, sorry, Fernando. Okay. So there you go. 2000 life is really, really um, strong. Surprised they made a 2000. I think the best use of this is going to be like throwing it on a flanker or something. Like send your Androxus in, then you shield him up. And it gives him enough HP to sort of make him like a tank. So that's what I see that being used as. Like, I don't think you're really going to throw it on another tank or something like that. Maybe on your healer to keep him alive if they're in trouble. But I see this mostly being used on flankers, like, they go in in a 2v1 and you shield them so they can actually take both of them out. Okay, let's get down to our main attack here, so. It's sort of a channel beam here, you can see you move for, um, slower when you use it, but it does lock on, so. I'll stay here and I can sort of move my aim to the right here and it still locks onto that person. You see? So it's quite, um, quite a strong weapon. Just have to... Yeah, walks really slowly near him. It's quite a short range. You can see we walk over here. It's gonna just fall off. So it's not very long range. But I assume since you are a frontliner, you're probably gonna be on the point or near the point. And you can just walk up to the enemy tank and go like this. Doesn't deal too much damage though. You can see here we only got through, what, a quarter of Fernando's HP? So you're not gonna be able to burn down people very quickly here. Yeah, so he takes full, um, three full charges of the ammo to just kill off Fernando, so don't expect to be taking out too many frontliners too quickly. Again, okay, the shield, and what's our ultimate here? Unleash the latent power of your gauntlet, channeling a blast that applies a massive knockback to all enemies for 2.35 seconds. Okay, that's quite cool. Maybe we'll use on this pip over here because he's actually running around so we can see him knocking back. So we go throw it down. Oh, it's like. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a thing we threw on the floor and it, um, just like knocked people back constantly. But it's like a beam weapon. Okay, that's really cool. So you can sort of use it to just push people back. Let's quickly build up our old charge here. We'll just go next to Fernando here and build it up. We'll go try that again because that was really really cool. We'll go to those skies over there and we'll just try and shoot them all over the place. Okay. Oh, does this F build up ult charge? No, it doesn't. Doesn't do any damage, so it wouldn't build up any ult charge. Uh, let's get over here. 
I'm gonna come knock these people back. It doesn't last too long. How long is it? 2.35 seconds. Very short amount of time here on your ultimate. It doesn't deal too much damage. It's 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 but it knocks back them super far. Jeez. Look at that. Okay. Um, be really strong like on fish markets, I think. Fish market maps like that where you're really close to the edge, you can just knock everyone off. I see that being really, really strong. Or just to like secure a point. Especially if they like have to run down a church. You can just wait till they come, knock them all the way. And that should give you like an extra 20 or 30% on the point. So if you're quite close to capturing, you can just use that to keep them off. Um, I guess if they have other tanks like Makara and stuff, they have to be like really close to you, you can use that to keep them away from your team. Seems like he could be a very supportive character as well, depending on how you build him. Okay. Because, yeah, you have multiple shields. Lots of them. Yeah, you have just a lot of CC and shielding for your team. You don't deal too much damage. And the only reason you're really a frontliner is because you're a super, super tanky. Quite strong. Okay. So recharge up. So I don't know. I don't think you can attack when you're recharging because that's a cast barter. It's unlikely you can attack. But that shield's very strong. Um, well, let's see. So we'll go recharge. No, you can't attack while you're recharging. So that's a kind of a downside there, but it recharges you so much. It's like a crazy, crazy heal. So it does 850 here. And if they have another shield character, remember, this is going to be insanely strong. So if they have like a Fernando that has shields or something, or a Ruckus especially. This guy seems to um, hard counter ru Ruckus quite hard. And he doesn't even need record to do it. You can just go right click on him and steal all this shield. And 2000, could we have a card here? Uh, what is it? We have a card that increases it by 20%. So I wonder if that increases the amount siphoned as well. Because that will be incredibly strong. Because 20% extra is 2400 per second. Yeah, that's pretty much a Grover's old worth of <laughs> healing there. If you can um, steal Ruckus' shield or anything like that. So that's quite crazy. Can you take Ying down in one charge? Oh, that's not good. But I think the main downside is the slow movement. Like, you can see you're moving super slow. It's like Ruckus. You're like Ruckus, just tankier and with less damage. But I can see this character being um, quite useful since you don't have to aim. Like, especially new players are just going to wreck it, just I think. <laughs> You just walk around people and they're not going to be able to hit you. Um, okay, let's quickly go look at his cards. Let's see what type of cards he has here. So, what I was thinking of when I initially saw him was just going a recharge build. Seems quite strong. You get uh, reduced cooldown of recharge there, increase shielding there. Um, that seemed to work out quite well. He has so much HP though. I didn't expect him to have that much HP. So, let's see. What can we go? So, yeah. Look at the original build I had here. So, we had the shielding. Then we had these two shielding here, which I was going to switch up for something else because I wasn't sure what to get. Probably the health would be the best idea because it's slightly more, maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm. Or maybe just some generic cooldown reduction would be nice. So, we can... Reduce the cooldown of production by two seconds. What's the cooldown of it currently? Okay, that might be a really good idea. Let's try this. So we get this. Reduce the cooldown by two seconds. We can get... Give the target 40% moves. It would be really nice. Maybe that will be a good idea. So we get this. Oh, shit, no. We get this. And then, uh, what else do we want? We could get... Just give us a bit of shielding. Maybe. I guess if we're spamming it enough, it's going to actually be a lot of shielding. Okay. And then we might just get some generic cooldown reduction over here and here. For now. Might switch it up later. This seems like a good idea. Runic block can go on 4 second cooldown. That will reduce it to 10 seconds, why not? I still think that's too long of a cooldown to build a build around it. The problem with these long cooldown spells is if you try and build a build around it, you're like, you have super vulnerable, um, like you're very vulnerable for certain times after you use your ability. Where if you focus around these short cooldown skills, you're 
vulnerability time is very short, so you give him less time to take advantage of your downtime or your spells. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got some movement speed, we've got protection. Okay, that's quite nice. And let's see another build really quick here. Um, Renic Blast probably isn't that good, but we'll just see how it goes here. Nah, there's no way you can make a Renic Blast build, I don't think. You go to the cooldown of Renic Blast and then get something else. I don't think you want these. It's like, there's no reason you should take these over these ones. Because the cooldown is just way longer. I guess you could go... Like this or something like that? I think it might be better to get cooldown reduction on recharge. Get more shield regen. Uh, let's see, let's see. Just get that on protection, I guess. And... Should we get last one? Just get my HP? No, I think this one will be better. Good for siphoning. Okay. That looks good. Let's go in and try those ones out. I want to see if we can keep Fernand... How long we can keep Fernando up with protection. With this um, protection build here. Because the cooldown is really, really short. If we get... Oh my god. Protection on Cassie would be so... Especially with all the lifesteal, we'll be so strong. Let's get this Holy crap. Done. Okay. So let's get over here. Protection build. You can't really see the movement speed benefit, but you can imagine it's going to be quite good. An enemy has okay. drawn first blood. Let's see. I want to try and keep him up. So we're keeping up quite well. He's That's not taking too much damage. Yet. How many can we get onto him before he dies? So that's two. We can get three onto him, right? Yeah. Okay. That's quite good. We shielded him for... How much is it? 2,000? So 6,000 damage we can absorb before he dies. Man, this is going to be really strong. I imagine like on a Cassie he can um, survive a bit. Wait, how long is the duration? Two seconds, okay. Mm, not too long of a duration. Okay. But I think, yeah, throwing on a flank is definitely going to be the way to go. Just, yeah. Okay. That's definitely the way you're going to do things, I feel like. Throw on the flanker, the flanker goes in, kills like one or two people, and he's not going to die because he has as much H um, HP as a Fernando with the shield on. Yeah, that's quite crazy. Uh, what else did we have in this build? I think it was the movement speed. That was what I was different, right? Oops, my one. This one. Yeah, just the movement speed. Okay. That's interesting. Um, let's go to the last one here. There's still going to be a lot of downtime with this. It's like, oh, it's very short range, actually. Yeah, when is this short range blast? It's very short range. Let's see how close we have to be to hit him. Okay, that hits him there. Doesn't hit the other two next to him, though, so... See if we can hit him from here. So this is outside your weapon range. So I don't think you're going to be able to hit him, yeah. So it's, like, stopped here. Okay, that's a very, very short range. I don't see you getting in on many people. This guy Enemy seems like he's just going to counter Ruckus. Because <laughs> no one else is really going to be a big damage dealer on the point besides Ruckus. You can use that on him. He does have quite a good explosion radius if you can get um, close to him, but... I don't see you getting close to too many people with no movement ability. Like, every character usually has a movement ability on F. But this guy here, he just has this disarm. There's no way to get into the enemy back line or anything like that. It's not the good mobility option. You can deal with the Cassie quite well though, I think. You can't really dodge roll around when you're just counting on her like this. And it seems to lock on for like a long... Look at that! That's crazy! Don't even have to be looking at them. It might get quite annoying though if there's people jumping around and stuff in front of you, if there's like multiple people. Like, let's see, if we want to hit the Ying, and we're like here. Okay. See that? Like, right over there locks into Fernando, that makes sense. So it's like, it's better than I thought, okay. How far do we have to go? Okay, so we, if we want to go to the sky, we have to deselect and then reselect the target. Like, if we want to go to here, we have to hit her, and then since we can't hit him like that, we have to deselect and reselect. Okay, that's not too bad. Slide down time um, in between that, obviously, since you have to deselect, but nothing too big. So it's really nice, though. 
deals quite good damage if you get all the shots off. Like that's almost what that one point eight. Unstoppable. Not too bad. I just think this character is going to be so strong because of his HP. Like once you get um Haven and all that stuff into your build, it's going to be absolutely insane. Haven and Chronos are just going to be so so strong. Obviously, there's Wrecker in the game, which could destroy you completely, but. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, um, I don't think you're going to pick this character with Ruckus. Because having that many shields on your team is just going to be 100% a loss once they pick up Ruckus. So maybe you guys, you play this guy as like a solo tank? That could work. Or maybe with like a Makoa? Yeah, that would be really good actually. Makoa, Makoa pulls them in, you disarm and they can't do anything, they can't roll away or anything like that. So if you grab the Cassie, she's not just going to roll away and get away. And then you can just channel her down. Okay. Yeah, I can see that being done with Makoa. Makoa's not a big shield user anyway. I mean, he does have his shield, but it's not like the main reason you pick him. The main reason you pick him for the hook. That's really nice. Okay. Yeah, maybe him and Makoa could be a front line. And then you have a back line of, I mean, a flanker of like Eevee or Androx or something like that. Or a Cassie, and then you just keep shielding her. And the enemy shouldn't be able to deal with her, especially with the last one, like a build like um, Dodger or Cassie. You can just throw it in between like um, her hits, and once she gets like to like half life or something, and she can just heal up with her life still before your shield goes down. So that could be very, very strong. Okay. So, overall, character looks quite strong. Um, a very tanky character, a lot of effective HP. Seems like he's not going to be able to protect his whole team too well, but you can protect one person very, very well. That's why you're probably going to have, um, yeah. Probably just going to make him use on like a flanker or something. I don't see a healer being quite useful here because obviously the healer is not going to heal up your shield. You can only heal your HP. And you actually don't have, let's see how much life you have. So yeah, you only have 3,500 life. So you don't have too much life. That's not ready yet. Enemy killing okay, spree. yeah. And you, I don't think you can heal up the shield either. So, interesting. Maybe they're trying to make a character where you don't need a healer. Or try to de-incentivize healing or something like that. Or maybe... Oh, okay, okay. This tries to make Korai stronger. That's what it is. Because when you pick this character, you don't want to pick up quarter eyes obviously because you 100% you need shield against this guy because 6,000 shield which regenerates so quickly you definitely need a wrecker so less people are going to pick up quarter eyes which makes healers stronger and okay that makes sense I can see what they're doing they're trying to incentivize picking up wrecker over quarter eyes and that's probably why like they didn't want to nerf quarter eyes too much because I was wondering why they didn't nerf, right, um, nerf quarterize a bit more. But this makes sense. If a character like this is coming out, um, it's going to be hard for, for teams. Because they only have to choose between either stopping the healer or stopping this super tank here. And this guy's just going to destroy a lot of the flankers and stuff. They're trying, like, Sky has no chance against this guy. They pretty much have equal effective range of, on their weapons. And this guy has <laughs> like 10k more life or whatever. An enemy Jesus is Christ. Savage. Okay. Yeah. So I think picking up this guy with the healers a definite must. That way you force them to choose between stopping you or your healer. And that could make a very strong team comp there. Okay. So overall, I think the guy is um, quite good. Quite a good character. Definitely really, really strong. The protection is going to be crazy strong skill. He's going to allow flankers to go absolutely crazy, win pretty much any 1v1. Because imagine like, because pretty much what's happening when you use protection on someone, you're making them as tanky as like a Fernando, but <laughs> they're going to have the damage output of like a Cassie or Androxus. It's going to be crazy. So, going to have to watch out for that. Wrecker is definitely going to have to be a must pick up against this guy. And that's going to make you heal super, super strong. So I think... Yeah, you definitely can't let this guy and say like a Ying or Mardam but be on the same team, that team I don't feel like. The healing is just going to be way too much. Okay. 
I guess it's going to create more like communication between the team. You can't just all go into like quarter idol record. You're going to have to mix it up. And then you have to sort of chase down your target and like if you pick up record, you're going to have to focus down this guy. Or if you pick up, I guess quarter eyes, you can focus down anyone, can't you? Because it's your healing on that target. Okay. And this weapon being able to just one shot the person. If I haven't ever realized, it's quite strong. Well, most of these flankers and healers, that's really good. He's going to have trouble with um, the Fernandes and stuff. Maybe this guy won't be played on the point, actually. Maybe he'll be played, like, flank Nando. And you, like, walk around with your... The problem is he has no moving abilities, which is his huge downside. That's a problem with Tyra as well. She has no moving ability, but... If we... We can walk around with, like, our Androxus or something and just shoot him up sort of just support him as a flanker. That could be really, really strong, because you take down all of these people so fast. They, there's no way they can do anything to you. They're just going to have to try and run away from you. Yeah. Anyway, overall, seems like a really, really strong character. Um, obviously, there's PTR, so his numbers might change before uh, live, but at the moment, pretty crazy. Because it's pretty much guaranteed damage with his... Oh, he can't finish off Pip. Interesting. But either way, quite a strong character. I can see him being used quite well in a team environment, especially. Um, I don't know about this ult though. The ult seems kind of weird with his kit. Cause like the whole kit, it seems like you want to keep him close. You know, you want to keep him close with your F. You want to keep him close for your weapon, stuff like that. And then your ult just decides to knock him all away. I mean, like it knocks him really far back, and it hits everyone at the same time, but I don't know. Just doesn't seem like it's an ult for him. Enemy rampage. Maybe they should have given him like a huge AoE shield or something like that. They can like shield all the allies near him, so like Fernando or something like that. But maybe, yeah, maybe that's too similar to like Fernando's ult. Yeah. I don't know. Just his ult seems to go against the rest of his kit here. Unless you're like I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with so. Like, I understand you can just knock people off the point or knock them off the edge and stuff, but. Like, when are you supposed to use that? You're supposed to deal damage to them, get them low, like, get this person low or whatever, and then just actually get all to finish them off. Something like that. Just doesn't seem to work with the rest of his kit too well. I guess you can knock him into the rest of your team somehow if you get him. Like, knock him into the Makara or something. I don't know. We'll see what people come up with. There's probably some synergies you can use with other people's ultimates. Like, I imagine a Sky ult or something. You drop Sky ult and then you lock him up against the corner like we did here. And that could be very good. Oh, well, we'll see what people come up with. This character is going to be quite strong if he stays as he is, I feel like. Just because of his high HP pool. But, we'll find out. Because we all know having no mobility could be a huge downfall here. Especially in Paladins, which... You have characters like Androxus, which have a crazy amount of dashes and stuff. So we'll see how it ends up. Anyway, guys, I'm interested to hear what you think about the character. And yeah, do you think he's going to be balanced, or OP, or underpowered? I'm interested to hear what you hear. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys next time.